Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Low Season Traveller Insider Guides. I'm your host, Jed Brown, founder of Low Season Traveller, and today I am absolutely delighted to be joined by the wonderful Alex Herman, who is the Director UK and Ireland at Swiss Tourism. Now, followers of Low Season Traveller on Facebook and Instagram will have seen that last week I had the opportunity to visit Switzerland for the very first time, courtesy of Switzerland Tourism, as I attended the Swiss Travel Mart, or STM, um, which is an event which is held every two years where Switzerland invites travel companies to visit the country to meet up with Swiss hoteliers, transport companies, tour operators and more, so that we can all understand what Switzerland can offer to travellers. Now, fortunately for us, October and November are the low season for most of Switzerland, so it was a great opportunity for us to sample the low season experience in this wonderful country. I caught up with Alex to learn a little bit more about the background of STM21, as it's known, and also to share with you all just why you should definitely consider a trip to Switzerland in her low season months. So, without further ado, let's discover our inner Swiss as we welcome the charming and wonderful Alex Herman. Enjoy. So, Alex, you are most welcome to the Low Season Traveller Insider Guides podcast. Great to have you on the show. How are you? Thank you so much for having me, Chad. I'm doing very well. Good, good. I, uh, delighted to have you on the show. Um, as I mentioned there just in the intro to the podcast, um, obviously, we met last week and uh, you guys showed me and, and an awful lot of other people a wonderful time at the Swiss travel market. And um, as I mentioned, it was my first time to Switzerland and it absolutely blew me away. Um, just for our listeners at home, you know, obviously, this is the insider guides and we'd like to try and bring the inner workings of the travel industry um, to, to our listeners. Um, just outline for our listeners exactly what the Swiss travel market is and how long it's been going and what it's all about. Uh, my pleasure. It's been uh, around for exactly 40 years, this event. It's a, a year that takes place, an event that takes place every other year. So this was number 20 that you attended. Yeah. And it's the, the one big event where we bring the global uh, travel trade community to Switzerland and have them meet with the suppliers from all over Switzerland, the destinations, any other people uh, uh, involved, key people involved in the, in the tourism travel industry. It's always a big highlight. And uh, of course, I don't have to tell you that this year it was um, even more uh, important for everyone. It was quite emotional actually for many people to be able to get back together again um, to, to see how people uh, uh, coped with the last um, 18 months. And um, it's just wonderful to see everyone. And of course, it was lovely to have you in Switzerland. I'm always very excited to have someone in Switzerland for the first time and uh, you know, see in their eyes how they react when they uh, ride on a mountain train uh, and you know, see these uh, spectacular sceneries as we did uh, together um, when we traveled. Absolutely. It was, um, yeah, my, my, my jaw was open, I think pretty much constantly for the whole week. Um, That's cool. That, that's, which is which I'm sure that's normal, um, but that the, the Swiss travel market was um, was fantastic. And like you say, it was very emotional because for I think for a lot of us, it was the first time getting out and about rather than having Zoom calls as well. Um, and of course, we you know we 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 were all there in Interlaken, uh, which is a fabulous spot, isn't it? I mean, I, it I, that, it's out of this world. It is a fabulous spot. It's also it's uh, one of the places in in Switzerland where tourism started. And especially um, given the fact that we both traveled from the UK to Switzerland, uh, the travels from, from Great Britain were uh, of uh, huge importance to that area to develop tourism 150 plus years ago. So it is, it is a great place. It's also in the heart of Switzerland. And um, it's just for many people, uh, people like yourself who had never been to Switzerland, um, but also for regular visitors, it's, it, uh, it embodies quintessential Switzerland, many of these things that come to mind if you say Switzerland to someone from the beautiful mountain uh, scenery to the, the cows and uh, the typical Swiss foods, the lakes, the trains, etc. So it, it, it's just the perfect place to experience all of that. It, do, it does tick all the boxes, I must admit. I'd, um, I think, you know, I was kind of aware of the, you know, of the, of the, the Swiss cows with the cowbells, but, you know, when you, 
see and hear uh, the, the the cowbells it's just it's just a beautiful sound um as well and, and it is very it's just very swiss as soon as you arrive at interlaken you feel like yeah i'm in switzerland you look around and you can see the although it was lovely clear sunny skies uh, while we were there in the low season months i should point out um but having a look around you can see the snow peaks uh, round about as well um yeah it just felt it felt very uh, very swiss <laughs> <laughs> the crisp and and cool, at least in the morning um, air, and and especially the view is never as um, spectacular as in in the September October time frame. It's basically the the best time of the year to to get this crisp clear um, uh, mountain air. Yeah, it's always beautiful in the summer, but oftentimes you have a little bit of mist or something. But an, an, an autumn morning is uh, it's the best a sunny autumn morning. It's that's as, as good as it gets in Switzerland. Yeah, it was absolutely tremendous. Um, and again, just for our for our sort of listeners, there was there was how many attendees did we have altogether from Switzerland and internationally at that event? The event is usually about six hundred plus people, and it's pretty much split evenly with um, two fifty to three hundred uh, people from around the world traveling to Switzerland for this event, and um, the rest is. Uh, um, representatives of all parts of Switzerland, um, all kinds of players and uh, people you get in touch with when you when you travel through Switzerland from the railway to the to the destinations to many hotels, uh, attractions, mountaintops, um, etc. And it was it was um, it was so efficiently done. I've got to say, um, you know, we were speaking before just offline. Um, I've, I've over the years been to many, many different events um, and you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to anybody um, out there if you know anything about Switzerland and the Swiss that everything runs on time, everything is super efficiently organised. Um, you know, they always say about, and I think I mentioned this on a Facebook Live last week, they say that with Apple, everything just works. With Switzerland, everything just works. You know, with the trains, we, we um, myself and, and Alex, we, we came over um, to, to, to together on the on the trains through Lucerne, and when you change trains, um, it, everything's slick. I mean, trains trains arrive on time and depart on time, which again shouldn't be a big deal. And for any of our listeners, wherever you are in the world, I don't know how your trains operate, but in the UK, they don't always operate on time. In Switzerland, though, and you were stressing this the whole time. You were saying, you know, guys, we need to be there on time because that train will leave on time. <laughs> and by God, they do, don't they? I'm, I'm happy you, you noticed that and you mentioned this, Chad. I hope you also mentioned uh, some of the partying that uh, was going on at night because that's also an important part of this event and shows maybe a little bit of a different side of Switzerland that many people are not as aware of that we can actually have a great time as well and then be on time the next morning for our first meeting. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, we, we had a stack of fun <laughs> on the evenings. I try, and, I try and downplay that for our listeners a little bit sometimes, <laughs> Alex, because I don't, I don't want them thinking that I was out there having too much of a great time, but actually I did. <laughs> well, it's obviously a B2B event, so it's, it's something that, um, uh, you know, it's not targeted for con uh, consumers. But in the end, I mean, uh, everybody who's attending there um, afterwards has uh, the job to, to sell their tours, their offers, their programs to their own clients. So we want to get people excited about Switzerland. So these are all people who design um, products and then uh, sell them afterwards with bigger and smaller tour operators uh, across the world. So we, we want them to have a good time and see all these aspects of Switzerland. Yeah, they, they, and, uh, they certainly did. They certainly did have yeah. a good time, and, and I did too. And also, you, you know, you, you organised um, as well with with all of the partners in Switzerland for each of the um, each of these sort of you know travel uh, planners um, that that sell and promote Switzerland to also go on to do um, a bit of a sort of a fam trip stroke site inspection afterwards to different parts of Switzerland. How many different parts of Switzerland were people firing off to from Interlaken? Um, in the days after, there were a couple dozen different uh, programs afterwards. <laughs> you know, after the after the first day, where we um, invited everybody up to uh, Jungfrau Joch to yes. see the brand new um, uh, V-Bahn, the brand new way to get uh, up to Jungfrau Joch um, uh, and, and save quite a bit of time there because it's 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 a long trip. But it's also high up, obviously. Yeah. Then um, we we invited everyone in Switzerland to uh, present their own uh, parts of the country, and um, we're very happy that most people actually joined one of these tours and extended their, their time in Switzerland. Once again, even more important now than, than ever to reconnect with, uh, with people. I mean, the, the, good, the great thing about the Swiss tourism industry is that 
um, it wasn't completely shut down like the tourism industry was in many other parts of the world. So um, it was more of a reconnecting than, uh, you know, finding your new contacts. Luckily, uh, many of the same players or most of the same players, um, be it accommodation, be it um, any kind of experiences, are still there. So uh, it, it was just a great um, opportunity to uh, see each other again and, and see what's happened. A lot of hotels in Switzerland and, and other um, uh, suppliers in the tourism industry were in, in the great position that they had very successful years in the um, uh, 15, 16, up to 2019 uh, timeframe. And so they used the time, the downtime, uh, the last 18 months to invest um, so they might have been closed or reduced, uh, uh, closed for a period of time, or they had um, reduced visit to numbers, but they took advantage of the time and invested in um, uh, refurbishings, in new, new attractions. And so it was also a great way to uh, show everyone what happened during that time and what their uh, customers can expect, expect when they come back to Switzerland or come to Switzerland for the first time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It's um, it's funny actually. That's that's that. I remember in the um, it was about the April time of 2020. So just after once we once we knew that the you know that COVID was going to be with us for some time and have a major impact, I was at a um, a, a large hotel conference, global hotel conference, and that was that was one of the things which they were which were they were saying is they were saying you know this is going to be an absolute golden time to if you need any refurbishment doing get it done now because tourism is going to close down we don't know how long for but you need to start preparing now for the reopening even though it could be a year away um, and i think that's clearly what what was happening in switzerland which um which i think is fantastic it's making the most of that time really but you did have quite you did have quite a lot of of, of swiss finding um finding uh, and dis suppose discovering maybe parts of switzerland they hadn't discovered before they were they were traveling still a bit within switzerland right yeah, I mean, hotels were only um, forced to close for a very short time uh, in the 2020, um, like March to uh, May timeframe, and then were able to reopen very quickly. And then we're, after that, we're not uh, forced to uh, close down again. So they they lost um, six to eight weeks in the off season, actually in a, in a downtime, April, May of 2020. And uh, already the summer season, last year 2020 was actually quite successful most of it as you mentioned um, domestic uh, travelers who also uh, didn't really have the opportunity to travel very far outside of switzerland so many people took advantage of the fact uh, that they um, still had their holiday they had the opportunity to uh, to spend the holiday in switzerland and um, rediscover their country one of the things we noticed which um, uh, made, uh, made people in Switzerland especially happy is that people of the different parts of Switzerland rediscovered um, uh, the other parts. So people from the French speaking part um, spent time uh, in the Italian speaking part of Switzerland, for example. Spe people from the German speaking part uh, spent quite some time in the French speaking part of Switzerland, et cetera, et cetera, of the four different language areas. So this is something that um, hopefully will continue. There was some international uh, tourism already last summer, but then last winter season 2020, 2021 was quite successful as well for many people, yeah. even though the, the number of international travelers was very low um, or, or low, I have to say, uh, from places like the UK it was almost non-existing uh, or the US from uh, some of the neighboring countries, there was some tourism. Um, hotels were always open, even uh, the restaurants were open and the ski resorts in Switzerland were open. So Switzerland is the only Alpine country that had a full ski season there last year and was able to, to prove that it's possible even during COVID times to have um, a really fun, uh, great um, ski holiday and stay completely safe. And then this summer, the same, um, summer 2021, uh, still a lot of Swiss, but then some of the uh, neighboring countries, they came back uh, with quite substantial numbers, actually. Um, so uh, in the mountains, and especially in areas that have traditionally been visited by the, by the Swiss a lot, um, many hotels had the best, uh, most successful um, season in a long time or forever. But of course, we have cities as well. We have convention uh, hotels, etc., that are really suffering. Uh, so, and, and of course, also places in Switzerland that have um, a lot of uh, long haul uh, travelers, usually like Interlock and like Lucerne, they uh, were suffering as well. So it wasn't 
um, uh, just a great story for uh, for everybody. It was a great story for some people, but overall, of course, uh, tourism in Switzerland was also struggling. Not nearly uh, on a level um, as many other countries, but uh, of course, there is um, there is hope that uh, uh, with the, the returning long haul travelers now, um, we will be. Uh, back to some of the record years we had in 2018-19 very very soon yeah oh, i'm absolutely sure of it um, one thing i will say that i was so I, i've traveled um i've traveled a bit to a few different destinations um over the past sort of six seven months and um, one thing that i was struck by is um is the 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 sort of the covid precautions um again were really um strictly in the best possible way and and in the nicest possible way strictly enforced um, and that really, really impressed me. You know, I loved how at every stage I was, you know, I was asked for my, you know, my COVID certificate and everything else, every, you know, the restaurants and everything else. They, um, they really adhered to it. The hotels, they adhered to it really um, strictly. And like I say, I know that should be par for the course, um, but in some destinations, it's not actually, in my experience. Um, but that's something that made me feel um made me feel very comfortable actually it made me feel a lot more at ease that um that that everything was being adhered to and um, all of the different protocols um were all being sort of adhered to and enforced in the in the best possible way and that i think that's probably a key to to the recovery as well is, is people knowing that you know this this is made as safe as it possibly can be it, this is a very very important point and uh, luckily as switzerland we are a well positioned here because we've always been known for um the fact that uh, you know we're a safe uh, destination, um, things are reliable and things work, that of course helps in the current situation very much. Yeah. Generally, I, I think we we probably have um, few regulations in Switzerland than some other countries do, but the difference is that these regulations are then really enforced and, and followed. Um, they actually don't even need to be enforced; they're, they're really followed. That's just the nature of the Swiss. We'd rather have fewer rules, but then we definitely adhere to those and um, compared to some even neighboring countries of Switzerland, um, they might have more rules, but then people are a little more, you know, uh, flexible with regards to um, what they actually do or, or not do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when we when we talk about um, Switzerland, you know, with, with any destinations that we sort of think about, sometimes people have sort of preconceived ideas. And one expression that I heard quite a lot um, over the past week was um, was the notion of Swissness. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to hear from you. What is Swissness to you, Alex? I mean, the first, the first um, association for me, the first uh, word that comes to mind is quality. I think that's what, what Swissness stands for. It's literally uh, quality. Many years ago, I met this traveler from the US actually in Switzerland, who um, I had a chat with, it was an 80 year old man who came to Switzerland every summer for a few weeks. And um, he said something to me that I never forgot. He said, you know, you know, I always come back to Switzerland. In Switzerland, nothing is average. And I think that was a, a great uh, way of putting this. Um, because when we talk about quality, People, some people might think of five star, or, you know, um, luxury or expensive or etc. But um, uh, quality in Switzerland is such a mindset. Um, uh, hospitality in general, uh, on a very high uh, level, a quality level, that even even you know the the youth hostel or the you know the camping or the two star hotel uh, are my they 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 might be just a little bit. Um, uh, better than in, in other places of the of the world. So quality might be the first thing, but Swissness is also the this unique fact of having a small country that is very um, uh, diverse with regards to several different languages and cultures all mixed together um, and increasingly, of course, also uh, open to the world, um, international, but still very much um, proud and very much um, very close to, to its tra traditions and uh, its culture, uh, the, the, the history of Switzerland, um, the, the, these very Swiss, uh, these uh, Swiss um, uh, the, the qualities such as um, being on time, you mentioned that earlier, being reliable, uh, you know, doing things uh, right when you do them, and also trying to be the best possible host. This is just so important for Switzerland. So long answer, there's uh, a lot more I could say about Swissness. Yeah. 
but I think that's what the Swiss is all about. Yeah, I think I think that sums it up uh, pretty well. It was interesting for me as well, um, speaking to um, other um, international travel organizations um, that were there at the STM last week. Um, and I was sort of asking them about, you know, they obviously feature other destinations as well as Switzerland. And I said, you know, it's my first time in Switzerland. Um, you know, you've obviously been to, you know, other areas roundabout uh, that might, may or may not compete with Switzerland. Um, what for you is, is, you know, special about Switzerland? And that's exactly what they said. They, they just said it, it's, it's quality. And therefore, you, you send your guests there knowing that it's going to be a quality experience. Um, what they did say as well, and, you know, it's one of those, you know, I kind of sometimes I think, oh, you know, should, should we mention this? But, you know, it's, it's, it's not a cheap destination. And by that, I mean, it's not cheap as in, you know, cheap and tacky kind of thing. Obviously, it's very much not. It's, it's very high quality, but it's not completely inexpensive either. I don't think it's expensive, if I'm being really honest. I think it's value for money. And, and I think sometimes you get, you know, there are some destinations where people say, oh, but it's very expensive. And actually, my overall feeling, having been and spent a week in Switzerland, is actually, I don't think it is expensive. If you, if you consider the quality that, that you get and the quality received at every, at every step of the way, um, including the trains, the infrastructure, the hotels, the quality of the actual tourist experience, I would argue it's not expensive at all. Um, it, the, the price may or may not be higher, but what you get for it is, you, you, you know, you get the quality. And I think that's really important for people to realise that. When people start saying, you know, if they're in the, the gym or whatever, that, that Switzerland is expensive, um, I, I, I would kind of push back on that. I, I don't think that it's expensive in that way if you look at the value for money that you get when you're there. Well, I couldn't agree more, obviously. Uh, Jed, thank you so much for summarizing this so nicely. No, I, I, it's exactly the wording I often use also. It's Switzerland is not cheap, it has never been cheap, it will never be a cheap destination. And Switzerland is probably also not for everyone. But um, sometimes it's also interesting to, to learn a little bit more about why certain uh, services, uh, certain experiences might be um, uh, a little more expensive than in other places. So for example, it's quite expensive to build in Switzerland. And that uh, one of the reasons for that is very high environmental standards. So, you know, you, um, you need triple pane glass, for example. You need, uh, you need uh, environmentally friendly um, ways of, of heating up a place, for example, uh, when, you, when you build in certain parts of Switzerland. So it's very expensive to build and to keep these, uh, the infrastructure up. That, of course, has its price. Or another, um, another factor, for example, in, in hospitality, um, Every person who serves you, uh, he or she uh, has unemployment benefits, has um, has a pension, has a uh, you know uh, uh, five four or five weeks of holidays, and uh, you know has job security. Uh, uh, so um, that that's also something to keep in mind. Of course, you pay for that. Same also for the food. The meat is quite expensive in Switzerland. Um, why is that? Uh, you know, it's. Um, it's kind of kind of hard to import meat to Switzerland. The meat that's locally produced is mostly you know, organic, and the cow has actually been out there in the in the meadows and, and eaten the grass and, and had a happy life while uh, <laughs> she was out there. Um, so so there's there's usually a reason for uh, for the prices uh, for the fact that Switzerland is not not cheap. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just while we're on that, just as you were speaking there about um, Swiss products. Um, which are, you know, fabulous. And we, look, we we all know the Swiss chocolate is absolutely sublime and the Swiss eat more chocolate, I think, per capita than any other nation on earth. Um, and again, having been there for a week, I've eaten more chocolate uh, than I've ever eaten in any other week in my life. And it was, it was fabulous. But something else that really struck me that um, I wasn't expecting um, was the quality of the Swiss wine. Um, I had quite a bit of Swiss wine. And I was thinking, what, why have I never seen Swiss wine on the supermarket shelf, but I'm led to believe that um, that you guys keep it all for yourselves, right? <laughs> it's all kept in Switzerland, or a lot of it. The, the people in Switzerland drink it all themselves, <laughs> or as you noticed, um, they share with the visitors, obviously. Of course, yeah. But it's, it's only a very small percentage that is um, exported. And the one, the one wine, the, the wines that are exported are are then quite expensive because it's yeah. it's a, a rare, and, and most vineyards 
all vineyards in Switzerland basically are, are small operations. So there's no industrial style wine production in Switzerland. Uh, and, you know, if you travel around Switzerland, you see these steep hills and, you know, that you can't it's just a lot of, a lot of it is still manual labor and um, or most of it actually. So uh, it's a small production, um, uh, but it's, it's the, the diversity and the, uh, different kinds of Swiss wines and some of them are, are grapes you only find in Switzerland is, is definitely a great story and for everybody interested in wine that that alone is a reason to travel to Switzerland and explore the different parts try the different reds and whites uh, in in almost all parts of Switzerland uh, which are producing wine these days it's really there's only a very few parts of Switzerland where there's actually no wine production even, even just outside of Zurich yeah. uh, or actually in the uh, within the the city limits of Zurich, there's vineyards. Uh, the same is true for many other um, towns and cities in Switzerland. Yeah, gosh, it was fabulous. Fine. I, I tried quite a few, uh, quite a few of the different ones while I was there, and um, uh, absolutely, absolutely loved them. Um, we also want to touch a little bit on. Um, we we had a fantastic presentation um, at the end of the, the the Swiss travel market on on Tuesday evening, and there was a speech given by. Um, by the, the, the head of, of Swiss tourism, as well as Swiss airlines and the Swiss railways as well. Um, but among other things, there's a fantastic video, which I will include the link on in the um, podcast description, which had, um, it was an advertisement with um, Roger Federer and Robert De Niro, which was brilliant. And I saw on YouTube, I looked it up afterwards and I know it's got something like 40 million views, um, but it's a, it was a tremendous. So again, for our listeners, I will, um, I'll include the link to that particular video on YouTube um, with the description. But um, one thing that, that was spoken about and, um, and I think it's really important because it's a huge part of what, what we do at Low Season Traveler as well is we're really, you know, very, very, serious about sustainability and um, what was spoken about was um, the concept of Swiss sustainability um, and what you guys at Switzerland Tourism um, are, are doing in terms of sustainability. Tell us a little bit about what Swiss sustainability um, is for you Alex. I'm more than happy um, but on a side note Roger Federer is a perfect impersonation of, of uh, Swissness to our early yeah. point here. He, he, is, he is a great ambassador. He's, he's, Exactly, he and he embodies just all these elements of Swissness with uh, with his character, with his performance over over so many years. So um, we're very very excited that he agreed to be uh, our ambassador uh, for for multiple years actually. So we're yeah. very much looking forward to to more exciting clips like that. So sustainable. Um, this is uh, something that Switzerland tourism uh, kept us busy for 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 years already, and then. With the, the start of um, the crisis, uh, we thought, you know, either now we slow down or we, we um, accelerate uh, and, and just move forward even faster on this track. And we decided to go with the second option and created this um, Swiss approach to sustainability um, and, and came up with this little wordplay, uh, which has, has several aspects to it. One of it is um, we want to be a little more transparent about all the many things we're already doing. Uh, and, and Switzerland has been, uh, you know, ranked in these in these ratings that are, are out there. And there's a famous one from Yale University. There's uh, some other famous um, uh, and, and annual um, ratings out there where Switzerland is often in the top three or, or even on on the first spot. We we just always we saw that we were happy and then we moved on um, to maybe just talk a little bit more about the many great things we're already doing. That's step number one. Of course, that's not enough at all. So um, a big a big effort here is to get the entire Swiss uh, tourism industry on board with that. So a lot of this is is internal. That's also why we started um, 12 months ago or so as a mostly domestic effort to get people behind this, this joint um, strategy. And uh, um, different suppliers, all, all kinds of suppliers and, and players in the tourism industry can join on three different levels. They have to have certain certification to be to be on, on each one of these levels. Um, they can move from level to level. Uh, they get a label for that, a, a domestically um, recognized label for now, which hopefully will be um, uh, internationally recognized as well very soon. And um, the the, um, the the tourism uh, the the tourism aspect to it is is very important as well. Um, of course, travel in itself is not 
the first thing you think of when you think about sustainability. But um, we know there's, there's a, a growing community of people out there who want to travel in a more sustainable way. Mm -hmm. And um, we uh, do whatever we can to make uh, travel as sustainable as possible in Switzerland. And to add the Swissness then, we call it Swiss Sustainable. I love that. I love that. Absolutely fantastic. We're, we're, we're starting to run out of time, Alex, but before we do, um, I just wanted to talk about um, myswitzerland.com. Um, you have got, um, in, in my opinion, um, and I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you, Alex, I, I, and for all of our listeners at home, quite genuinely, it's one of the best tourism authority um, websites that I've seen in a very long time. Um, and it's got, apart from having a wealth of information, what I love about it is a little bit similar to, to how we've done it on, on Low Season Traveller, is you, when you first go on uh, myswitzerland.com, you see images um, but by, by month, done by month. And it's, again, incredibly sustainable and responsible to show off every single month of the year in Switzerland. And it has a short video clip um, so I'm describing this for all of our listeners, but you have to visit the website and see it for yourself. And when you see each clip and you can click on the months and see a video clip from the different months, and then it shows you where the video clip was taken. And actually you can move the mouse around to a degree and actually direct where it goes as well. And then you can hover over the name and it'll show you where it is. Um, how wonderful is that website, Alex? I'm glad you, you, uh, you enjoy it. Um... There's actually a lot of people who enjoy the website and spend yeah. quite some time on there. It's been ranked repeatedly as the most visited um, tourism uh, national tourism board website. Uh, so we, we're we're ahead of um, much bigger names uh, yeah. like New York, Paris, or uh, you know other countries that are, have much higher visit numbers than uh, visit numbers in Switzerland. We have um, we've always been a company that has a lot of um, technology minded people. Several of our members of the management board have a technology background. I myself have a technology background. So we're very close to technology. And we just want to make sure we, we provide um, the end consumer, but also everybody in the industry with everything they need on this website, but also make it an enjoyable experience to, yeah. to visit the website. The, the topic, the history behind the months is actually that Switzerland is um, a destination for all four seasons for uh, all 12 months, for all 365 days in the year. And there are, of course, lower seasons and higher seasons, but depending on where you're coming from and de depending on what you're doing in Switzerland, um, there's always a season for something somewhere. That's yep. the, the story behind the approach with the months. That we, uh, which, is, which is what we absolutely love because that's, you know, our, our take on this has always been, you know, yes, there might be lower times when there are less visitors there, um, but it's not a lower time in terms of the experience to be had. And, you know, like I say, we, we, we were there in Interlaken in, in October and, and I was then on to Andermatt in October and I was told that for both it's the lower season. Um, okay, to a degree, we got a little bit lucky because it was clear blue skies for most of the time, and it, it, but it was just utterly wonderful. And, and all I was thinking to myself, and I shared this with, um, with our viewers on social media is, you know, is, is this, I was showing them videos saying, is, is this a low season um, experience do, in your eyes? What, what do you think? Because for me, this is not a low season experience. This is an utterly wonderful, wonderful experience. But that's what I love about the website, showing off each and every month um, in, in, a, in a positive light and in a realistic light. Um, and it's just very, very informative. But the whole website is, you know, you, you scroll down from there and it's obviously got links with your partners on rail and on Swiss airlines. Um, it's got some kind of fun stuff there as well. So it's got different places for city breaks and skiing, snowboarding and the mountains, competitions. Um, but then what I absolutely love as well is uh, my Swiss bench, which I have voted for, by the way, uh, on behalf of the UK. Um, and this is where the, the winner, the winning country gets to have their bench um, put on the top of uh, the Jungfrau Rock. Uh, which I thought is absolutely fabulous as well. And obviously Roger Federer is on that one as well. And like you say, yeah. he's, he's a great ambassador. Um, you can also learn a lot about his favorite um, parts of Switzerland, his favorite hikes, his, his favorite activities uh, that he does himself uh, when he has some time off with his family. Um, so there's a little Roger uh, traveling with you on many of the sites and uh, telling you uh, much about uh, his own preferences. 
Yeah, lovely, absolutely wonderful. So listen, I would encourage everybody out there, go on myswitzerland.com and see how a tourism authority website should look, in, in my opinion. Um, but it's wonderful and you'll learn an awful lot uh, more about uh, Switzerland um, at every time of the year when, and it's all equally wonderful, I can assure you. Um, but Alex, we have run out of time. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And of course, thank you so much for your hospitality last week. Um, which was greatly appreciated. My first time, 100%, uh, it won't be my last time. Um, I do think I could travel for two years and not experience everything in Switzerland. For a small country, you know, there's an awful lot to see in Switzerland, isn't there? I'm, I'm very happy to, to hear that. Thank you um, again for, for coming to Switzerland. Uh, thanks for your time here. I very much appreciate that. And um, yeah, please, myswitzerland.com. And then, of course, once you visit the website, uh, don't forget to either call your tour operator, or visit your travel agent's website, or you can even book directly on myswitzerland.com and uh, see you in Switzerland. Thank you so much, Alex. Have a great week. Thank you, Thank you so much, Chad. So there you have it. Huge thanks again to Alex for taking the time to share his insights on Switzerland with us today. And as we mentioned in the podcast, please do visit myswitzerland.com to discover all that this wonderful destination offers. It really is a brilliant website. But that's our show for this week. Thanks as always for your company. I hope you have a great week wherever you are. Stay healthy, stay safe, keep your travel dreams alive. And don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, family and social networks. And finally, remember that travel is always better and fairer for the planet, the local communities and you, the travellers, when it's without the crowds.